There you go. Nice. There you go. That is resonance. And look at the water. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Right here. A lot of these, a lot of these things that I'm doing, I actually, they're not really magic. They're more like science. But actually, science is pretty magical. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, a lot of things happen. You know, people say magic isn't real. I don't know. I think magic is, I think life itself is kind of magical. Just the fact that we're here, all of our billions of cells working together, and all the miraculous things that happen outside our body, inside our body, it's pretty magical to me, I think. But that, that's, that's my opinion. And I'm going to talk to you about a little bit about um, this rope. Remember I told you about you have the capacity to live to be 100 years old? This rope represents your lifespan. This is as long as you're going to live. You have the capacity to live to be 100 years old. However, if you engage in bad habits, you can actually cut your life in half. All right? Uh, you'll cut your life in half. So you're only going to live 50 years now. Can you think of a bad habit that might shorten your life? Um, eating junk food. Very good. That's a good one. That's exactly right. You eat junk food, right? Then you'll get, you might get you might get uh, overweight. You might get diabetes. I a lot of stuff from eating junk food. That's a very good one. Can you name one? A bad habit that might shorten your life? Um, like um, doing drugs. Doing drugs. That's a good one. Yeah. You just did drugs. Now instead of being 50 years old, now you're only going to be 40 years old because you did drugs. You ate the junk food. Any other bad habits you can think of that might shorten your life? Are we drinking? Drinking alcohol. Yeah, in moderation, that's fine. If you have a glass of beer or wine once in a while, but if you're drinking alcohol every single day, that's not good. That's a very good one. So you just shorten your life if you drink alcohol. That's right. I'm going to cut my finger off here. Yeah. <laughs> that would shorten your finger. Shorten your finger. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Exactly. You don't want to do that. Any other bad habits anybody can think of? Smoking. Smoking cigarettes. They're excellent. Yeah. I don't know why people smoke cigarettes. That is the ultimate bad habit. I mean, it's just... There's nothing good at it, it's just bad. It's just uh, it's an ultimate expression of peer pressure. I just want to get along with my peers, so I want to look cool, so I want to smoke cigarettes, you know? I can't think of any other reason that you would smoke cigarettes. And finally, the last bad habit that hardly ever anybody mentions. Stress. Stress, well, yes, that could be considered a bad habit. Yeah, it could stress, it could do it. What I'm talking about is doing nothing, being sedentary, sitting on the couch all day and not exercising and stuff like that. That's a very bad habit. Remember, the easy chair can be just as deadly as the electric chair. Okay, mm. so that's that's another bad habit here. So all these bad habits and stuff. Here's the thing to remember: we feel personally attacked. <laughs> <laughs> you know, simple that one, Mark. I'm glad I'm hitting a nerve. That's, that's what I'm doing. Another nerve, gonna laugh. Yeah, that's right. Another thing about bad habits. My my father is a rabbi, and he used to say a habit is a really hard thing to break. It's a form of self self enslavement. You're actually enslaving yourself to this thing that you have to be tied to all the time, and it's hard to get rid of a habit. I should have wrote it up on the board, but habit. You take habit, and you get rid of the H. You still have a bit. Uh -huh. right? You get rid of the A, you still have a bit. You get rid of the B, you still have it. Uh -huh. That shows you how hard it is to get rid of bad habits. Very hard wow. to get rid of. It just, it just stays there. That's, that's something, think of it. Yeah. something my dad taught me. My name is Daniel, and uh, he also said that, Daniel, if you rearrange the letters a little bit, you get denial. So that uh -huh. kind of is a reminder to me not to, to be in denial, not to uh, fool myself, I guess you could say. So here's the thing to remember. Even if you've done some of these bad habits in your life, it's never too late to turn it around, be healthy, say, I want to exercise, be like Jack Delane, I want to eat good food, I want to, you know, do all that stuff, get enough rest and avoid all those things. If you do that, you can restore your life back to its original 100 years. Yay. Yes. Yay. Thank you. Well, you guys are a good crowd. I'll tell you, I want to crawl. I want to crawl. Yeah. <laughs> I want to crawl. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you, there's no respect at all. I'm not the Surgeon General. They offered me a cigarette. I'll tell you. Oh, man. I'll tell you. It's not no smoking. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, demonstrate another thing here. Um, my, my father, as I said, is a rabbi, and he would perform marriages and stuff. In a Jewish wedding, there's something we do. We break a glass. That's part of the procedure. You take a, the, the groom stomps down the glass. Mm -hmm. And there's some uh, traditional Jewish reason for doing that. The temple was destroyed or something like that. But what my dad says is, well, he, he, he jokes around. He says, actually, it's the la he tells the groom before he does it, he goes, this is the last chance you'll have to put your foot down. But, ah. <laughs> but he says marriage is like glass. It's very fragile. 
and easily broken. And once it's broken, it's real hard. It's like Humpty Dumpty, real hard to get it back once it's been messed up. And I think some of us have had some some uh, experience with that, with, uh, with uh, stuff like that. But I, I went through a Jewish divorce. The hardest part was trying to glue that glass back together again. Oi, vey. Oi, oi, vey, I'll tell you. But, well, she wanted the glass. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> but, you know, so bad. We were so incompatible because I was Jewish and she was a devout Protestant. No matter what I did, she protested. Uh, <laughs> she was Protestant. But, so, <laughs> this, this is going to kind of demonstrate that thing about how marriage is very fragile and stuff like that. This rope that we just uh, used before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie a knot in this rope, and I'm going to do it with one hand, and I'm going to do it real fast. And uh, as I said, I did get married, and it was real fast. It was a shotgun wedding, and they threw minute rice at my wedding. It was very fast. Oh, wow. Very fast. Oh, wow. But, no, it was, no it, was a, it was a fancy wedding. During the reception, they served the Italian wedding soup. And for the divorce, it was split pea. But anyways, but, so... <laughs> this knot is going to be in this rope, and it's going to happen quick. And that's what can happen in your life. You can get into the car, into a car with somebody that's not a good driver, reckless, drinking or something, and in an instant, just like this, your life's changed. You, all of a sudden, you've got this knot now in this rope. You've got a, a thing in your leg. You've got a piece of glass in your stomach, and it happens quick. And that's what it reminds you of. You have to be very careful. Because things can happen careful. If you're not careful with your life, you can get injured, and it can happen very suddenly. And that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to tie this knot in the rope. We're going to try and do it real fast, as fast as I can here. All right, here we go, the fastest knot. There we go. Nice. And as you see, that's, it's very difficult to undo that knot once it's in there. All right, well, you guys. That was pretty dang cool, actually. Yeah, you guys, you guys are.